Good morning. My name is Gabriela Medellin, and in collaboration with Alec, we have been investigating the Fortune Evolution at top of rating low energy sea breeze dominated microtidal beach. This image shows the study area during storm conditions with extreme water levels. Four dunes provide habitat and natural protection in coastal areas. Dune formation and development are controlled by alien marine and ecological processes. The dune height is a key parameter for determining storm impact on barrier islands and for calculating the coastal resilience index. Storm scale predicts dune erosion when water levels exceed the dune toe. However, a previous study conducted on a mesotidal beach suggested that extreme water level can contribute to dune growth. Five-year morphological evolution data, in which Fordune was not present at the beginning of the study period, can be analyzed to investigate dune formation and growth. The purpose of the present study is to investigate the role of aeolian and marine processes on the dune morphodynamics by means of high-resolution beach surveys. The study area is located on a barrier island in the northern Yucatan Peninsula. Wind and wave climate are mainly dominated by local sea breezes that are more intense during the spring months. Central American cold surge events occur during the fall winter and are responsible of more energetic wave conditions. A microtidal regime with tidal range of less than one meter characterizes this area. The study site is bounded by coastal structures that play an important role in beach morphodynamics. Significant beach accretion has occurred during the past 30 years due to the construction of the port. The red line indicates the shoreline position prior to port construction. A subaqueous bar system is present throughout the year and the Yucatan coast presents dunes with heights between 1.5 and 4 meters. Beach profiles have been conducted from May 2015 to March 2020 on a weekly and bi-weekly basis using an RTK GPS system along 20 cross-shore transects extending seaward to approximately 1.5 meters depth. Therefore, shoreline, inner sandbar, and dune dynamics can be investigated with this data set. Environmental conditions were also measured for the study period. Mean sea level has been recorded using a tide gauge insta installed inside the port and waves with an ADCP at 10 meters water depth. Atmospheric conditions were measured with a meteorological station installed 10 meters above the ground level. This image shows the beach progradation area since the port construction, occurring at a faster rate on the west portion of the beach near the port's jetty. According to a previous study, rapid progradation leads to a series of low further ridges whereas slower rates of progradation allow for the development of a single larger fordon. This corresponds to what is observed at the study site, where beach profiles developing a fordon are mostly found in the slower progradation rate area and are marked in white. Roads and touristic infrastructure have prevented fordon formation at some transects. The top image shows the five-year beach elevation change, where dark red areas show the largest elevation increase. The dashed black line represents the shoreline corresponding to May 2015, and the black solid line corresponds to March 2020. There are some locations that show a large increase in elevation landward of the shoreline where dune generation and growth is observed. The lower panels show the five-year fordon evolution at selected beach transits. This presentation will focus on transit P5, where beach progradation is small. The high temporal resolution of the surveys allows us to identify the moment of dune generation and subsequent growth and to investigate the nature of the processes involved. 
In order to understand beach dynamics, the evolution of different beach features, such as the dune, berm, and submerged sandbar, can be correlated with the different forcings, such as wind, waves, and tides. Atmospheric conditions have been recorded since 2017. Time series of wind speed, temperature, and rain with one minute frequency are shown together with the monthly mean of daily maximum wind speed, mean temperature, and mean monthly rain totals. Shadow areas correspond to plus minus one standard deviation. The highest daily wind speed occurs in the spring months, as well as high mean temperature and the lowest rain totals. The time evolution of the dune crest height shows the highest rate of dune growth occurring during the spring months, implying a relation with aeolian processes. Wave conditions were measured during the study period at 10 meters depth. Time series of significant wave height, peak wave period, and wave direction are shown as well as sea level measurements and water levels obtained from numerical modeling. The monthly mean and standard deviation of all these variables are also shown. For the wave direction, the monthly mode was computed. During the spring-summer months, low-energy sea breeze-generated waves are predominant, together with lower water levels. Storm waves associated to cold fronts are common during autumn winter months when water levels are higher. This figure shows the temporal evolution of the water levels are high and are low, which correspond to the sea level plus the 2% exceedance wave run up and the sea level plus the wave setup. The dune height and dune toe evolution are also shown. We can observe that our high exceeds the dune toe elevation during every storm season, leading to a collision regime in the Salinger storm scale. And no decrease in dune height is observed. At the beginning, the dune toe and dune crest elevation are similar since no dune existed. During the first storm season, the initiation of the dune is observed as dune crest elevation starts to increase with respect to the dune toe. Less often, our high exceeds the dune crest elevation, which would correspond to the overwash regime in the storm scale, and a decrease in dune height is observed. Sandbar crest has been identified for each survey and depicted in white dots on this time stack of beach profile elevation. Offshore sandbar migration is observed during spring-summer months, whereas onshore migration happens during storm season in autumn-winter months. The sandbar approaches the shore, and sandbar welding occurs sometime between January and April of each year increasing nearshore sand volume. To further analyze the spatial and temporal variability of this beach section, an empirical orthogonal function analysis is performed. Unfortunately, the offshore extent of beach profiles is not constant and depends on weather conditions. Therefore, only the first 60 meters of cross-shore distance will be considered, and those beach surveys shorter than 60 meters are not included in the analysis. We performed this analysis with the aim of gaining further insight in marine and aeolian contributions to dune generation and growth. The upper image shows the five-year fortnightly beach profile data. The lower image shows the first and second special modes of beach profile variability containing together almost 75% of the total variance. The first mode shows the greatest variability in the nearshore section of the profile and a smaller variability at the dune area. The second special mode shows greater variability in the dune area and a smaller variability with an opposite behavior in the berm area and nearshore area. 
temporal evolution of the first mode shows an increasing trend during autumn winter months, indicating an increase in inertial sand volume. This mode is mostly associated to marine processes. The temporal evolution of the second mode shows an increasing trend during the spring-summer months, indicating dune growth and vermin volume decrease. The second mode is associated mostly to eolian processes. As a concluding summary, dune initiation is associated to marine processes occurring during storm wave season and higher water levels leading to onshore sandbar migration and welding and berm overwash. Dune growth is mostly associated to eolian processes occurring during spring-summer months when waves are less energetic and water levels are lower, leading to maximum critical fetch distance and offshore sandbar migration. Also, the monthly mean of daily maximum wind speed is higher and rain is absent. Future work includes the analysis on the role of vegetation, which is essential in dune evolution. We acknowledge CONACID, José López González, Servicio Mareográfico Nacional, and Red Universitaria de Observatorios Atmosféricos.